Dear students, today we are going to discuss about the interaction of neutrons. The main topics include general properties, slow neutron interactions, fast neutron interactions and neutron cross-sections. Neutrons do not carry any electrical charge and so they are not affected by the electric field of the atoms and this enables them to move freely through large atomic spaces without interacting with atoms. But if they pass near the nuclei, they encounter strong nuclear force. As a result of the interaction, the neutron may either totally disappear and may be replaced by one or more secondary radiation or the energy or direction of the neutrons is changed significantly. The secondary radiations resulting from neutron interactions are almost heavy charged particles. These particles may be produced either as a result of neutron induced nuclear reactions or they may be the nuclei of the absorbing material itself and which have gained energy as a result of neutron collisions. Most neutron detectors are utilized some type of conversion of the incident neutron into secondary charged particles which can then be detected directly. The relative probabilities of various types of neutron interaction change with neutron energy. So on the basis of their energy, the neutrons are divided into two categories. First one is the fast neutrons and the other one is the slow neutrons. The slow neutron interactions include elastic scattering with absorber nuclei. Slow neutron interactions. For slow neutrons, the interaction include elastic scattering with absorber nuclei and a large set of neutron induced nuclear reactions. Elastic scattering is a principal mode of interaction of neutrons with atomic nuclei. And the process of elastic scattering, the target nuclei remains in the same state after interaction. Uh, the slow neutrons have small kinetic energy and because of this small kinetic energy of the slow neutrons, very little energy can be transferred to the nucleus in elastic scattering. The elastic scattering brings down the slow neutron into thermal equilibrium with the absorber medium. The slow neutrons will have energy in the range of thermal neutrons which at room temperature have an average energy of about 0 0.025 eV. The slow neutron interactions also include neutron induced reaction and they can create secondary radiations of sufficient energy. Because the incoming neutrons energy is so low, all such reactions must have a positive Q value. In most material, the radiative capture reaction plays an important part in the attenuation or shielding of neutrons. Next is about the fast neutron interactions. As the neutron energy increases, the scattering becomes greater and therefore the neutron can transfer an appreciable amount of energy in one collision. The secondary radiations in, are also called as recoil nuclei and they have picked up a detectable amount of energy from neutron collisions. At each scattering site, the neutron loses energy and is thereby moderated or slowed down to lower energy. The most efficient moderator is hydrogen. The neutron can loss up all its energy in a single collision with a hydrogen nuclei. For heavy nuclei, only a partial energy transfer is possible. If the energy of the fast neutron is sufficiently high, then inelastic scattering with the nuclei can take place, in which the recoil nucleus is elevated to its excited state during collision. The nucleus quickly de-excites, emitting a gamma ray, and the neutron loses a greater fraction of its energy. Inelastic scattering and the secondary gamma rays plays an important role in the shielding of high energy neutrons. Next is about neutron cross section. A neutron interacts with the nuclear particles mainly through the strong nuclear force. 
the strong force is extremely short range and therefore the particle must be very close to the nucleus to be affected by it. Neutrons because of their electrical neutrality can get extremely close to the nucleus. Hence they can penetrate deeper into the material as compared to the charged particles. And this higher penetration capability is problematic in terms of developing effective radiation shields around neutron sources such as nuclear reactors. Deeper penetration also carries advantages also. And for example, a neutron beam can be used for non-destructive testing of material. Deeper penetration also carries advantages as a neutron beam can be used for non-destructive testing of materials. Just like photons, a beam of neutrons passing through a material also suffer attenuation. The probability per unit path length is a constant for any interaction mechanism and the probability is expressed in terms of cross-section sigma per nucleus for each type of interaction. The cross-section has units of area and is measured in units of burn. Each nuclear species will have an elastic scattering cross-section, a radiative capture cross-section and zone, each of which will be a function of the neutron energy. When multiplied by the number of nuclei n per unit volume, the cross-section sigma is converted into macroscopic cross-section capital sigma by the relation capital sigma that is a macroscopic cross-section equals capital N into sigma. The sigma has dimensions of inverse length. This macroscopic cross-section is a probability per unit path length for specific process. The cross-section for each individual interaction that is sigma total equals sigma scattering plus sigma radiative capture. The resulting sigma total is a probability per unit path length that any type of interaction will occur. And this quantity has the same significance for neutrons as the linear attenuation coefficient for gamma rays that which have, we have discussed in our earlier classes. And in a neutron beam attenuation experiment, the number of detected neutrons falls off exponentially with absorber thickness by the relation I by I0 equals E raised to minus sigma total into T. The neutron free path lambda is related to sigma total as 1 by sigma total. In solid materials, lambda for slow neutrons may be of the order of centimeter or less, whereas for fast neutrons, it is normally tens of centimeters. The neutrons are not narrowly collimated in most of these cases, so that they always involve a bad geometry conditions or may always involve a broad B. And when discussing the rate of reactions induced by neutrons, it is convenient to introduce the concept of neutron flux. If we consider neutrons with a single energy or fixed velocity v, the product v in the sigma gives the interaction frequency for the process for which sigma is a macroscopic cross-section. Rate density, which is the reactions per unit time and volume, is given by nr into v sigma, where nr is the neutron number density at the vector position r and nr into v is defined as the neutron flux phi r and it is having dimensions of length raised to minus 2 time raised to minus 1. This reaction rate density is given by the product of the neutron flux and the macroscopic cross section for the reaction. So reaction rate density equals phi r into sigma and this, this relation can be generalized to include an energy dependent neutron flux that is phi of r e and cross section sigma e that is reaction rate density equals integral 0 to infinity phi r e sigma e d e
and these are the references thank you